Seven Sigma of Green. Today is the day we get our tiny home. We're getting it delivered. Yay! So excited. There it is in the distance. They're discussing delivery. We got the truck and the tiny home. We got some people behind us with crawlers and other equipment so that they can deliver the home. And uh, it's so cute. I can't wait to get inside. But before we do that, we have a challenge. So, and it's getting it up to the property. So let's see what happens and how they're gonna do that. Now what we have here is a Krupp Island 6243 Park Model RV. Now even though we call it a tiny home, technically it's an RV because it has less than 400 square feet of living space. The loft is not full height, so by building codes, it's not considered livable space. Now since it is built on a wheel chassis, the home is classified and certified by RVIA as an RV. And that's only if you care about those type of things. Wink, wink. How did I do this? So, because the home was being delivered from out of state, the freight charges did not include the services of a house cat. So we had to hire a separate company that had the equipment to navigate the turns so that we can get the home up the mountain into our property because the delivery truck was not going to make it. Now for those of you who want to know the dimensions of the home, this park model is 35 feet long, 12 feet wide, and 14 feet tall, and weighs about 19,000 pounds. So they have disconnected the home, and the cat is gonna take it up to the property. Although it was an added expense, I'm glad that I ended up finding and booking a cat at the last minute. Because there are two tight turns on the way up to the property that I thought the truck would be able to make. And if I would have went the cheap route and not hired the cat, the home would have been dropped on the side of the road and we would have to have figured it out. Which definitely would have sucked. See that curve? That's what they're trying to I know we were going to be hitting a lot of trees. This is a really sharp curve and very narrow road. Um, and they got to be skilled to, to, to be able to do this and get around these curves. Excellent, excellent driving. Ooh, and they even miss missed the pole right there. Ooh, my goodness. That is a curve for you. And they got that house around that corner. 
I, I'm impressed. I'm really, really impressed. Wow. I am impressed. So I did anticipate hitting a couple of trees on the way up. So we took a pole saw to the trees that I thought would be an issue. However, obviously, I missed several other trees along the route that I thought we would be clear from hitting. But again, another rookie mistake. As long as we don't break any windows, it's all good. A few pinstripes might even add a little bit of character. It's about a mile and a half from where the truck disconnected up to the property. And because of the terrain, we had to take it nice and slow. The guys were doing their best to avoid as many trees and road ruts as possible. And they actually did an excellent job. Now this is the second turn that I was initially concerned about the delivery truck being able to make. But with using a cat instead, they made it fairly easy with no issues. Now what we did anticipate correctly was clearing all the brush on both sides of this drop. My son and I did a good job with cutting back more than enough space for the home to pass. Cause if you remember, this hill was overgrown with brush and littered with rocks. We also made a good call going with the 24 foot entrance gate as opposed to the 12 foot gate that was already there. And having that turnout cut in on the opposite side of the road came in handy. I'll know for sure that we made it wide enough when it's time for the well drilling rig to make that turn. Another expense that kind of hurt was hiring a setup company to block, level, and anchor the home once it's parked in its final location. The setup crew was already waiting up at the property when the delivery truck with the home arrived. So they had to wait about an hour for us to hook up to the cat and pull the home up the mountain. But the crew was patient and cool, so it all worked out. When we hired the contractor to do the dirt work for the home location and the circular driveway about a month ago, we decided to make the home site 30 feet wide by 50 feet long so that we can have enough room for a utilities area on one side and enough room to build a raised deck on the other side. I also wanted to leave enough room at the back of the home as well, so we pre-measured and placed orange cones to know exactly where to position the home. It's going in. It's going in. We had a few challenges with the trees and and whatnot, but there are no windows broken that we know of. Um, the roof still looks good, but they are backing it into the property, the area where we made um, some room. And then after they uh, set it down, they will do some leveling. Now I can tell the wife was a little perturbed that I had the house placed a few feet forward more than she wanted. So I had to walk down and remind her of the extra space needed for the pooling of water runoff when it rains, because I think she forgot. So after she tried to sucker punch me and miss, I gave her a kiss on the cheek and all is forgiven. And they are leaving. 
And then now we're going to do some leveling so that they're gonna level it out. So the guys are gonna start by removing the tow hitch and drill the holes for the anchors. And they might have to remove one axle in order to have the correct spacing for the piers. So we got the park model in its location. Right now they are working on doing the blocking and leveling and doing some anchors on the corner. I finally got it in here. Wasn't as bad as I thought, but it wasn't as easy as I thought it was gonna be. This model comes standard with three axles, but we went ahead and added a fourth due to the long drive from Indiana to California. Turns out they were gonna to have to remove one axle, including one set of tires, to place additional piers to avoid sagging in the axle area. And I can always throw the wheels and axles back on if I ever need to move the home in the future. The guys also did me a solid by jumping on the roof and removing some of the travel protection, which I really appreciate it because I'm not too fond of heights. But I'm still gonna have to get up there and remove that green protection tape around the windows. Later guys, see you when it's time to add some skirting. We are officially complete with the delivery of our tiny home. Yay! Everything is all set up. It is all leveled. First of all, it's really cute. It's so cute. We'll go in shortly, but it's on the property. That's our bedroom back there. And that's our loft. And just so you can see the leveling that they did. All right, so we are in the tiny home and it's so cute, it's so cute. Look at this. Well, so the furniture is on the ground because we just got it delivered, but look at this. The windows overlooking that view. Oh, how gorgeous is that? The windows are amazing. I love windows. It has tons and tons of light and it's bright and airy. The kitchen is gorgeous. We have our stove here and our refrigerator and cabinets. There we go back. We got another window here for more lighting. And we go right into our bathroom. It's actually pretty spacious, more spacious than I thought it would be. And we have a sliding door here for the bedroom, so you can just slide the door to close it. And we have our cabinets. And our bedroom. And we have a little thing here for to watch TV if, if you want. And then we go back out. And we're gonna go up into the loft space. Hey. And this is our loft. So they they put all the all the chairs and stuff up here. And the television and all of that, but that's the the loft. And then, as you can see, Anu is checking out the new home as well. Woohoo! <laughs> 
<laughs> we slid the couch in place so you guys can get a better view of the view. It's going to be really nice when we get everything set up and running. And the best part of having this park model is that we now have a temporary base of operation where we can comfortably continue building our off-grid homestead, which is going to be both fun and challenging. Hi. You like your new place? I know. You like it? You like it, Booba? The good thing um, about it is that it comes with a refrigerator. And it comes with a washer and dryer. Comes with that as well. She like doing shit you ain't never did before. <laughs> trying not to break shit. Mm -hmm. You do to put this to put the screen on. <laughs> I use a screwdriver. <laughs> the scientific high IQ tool made by God. So we're, we're doing high tech, high tech activities. We're putting screens on the windows. High tech, high level, professional grade. High tech and high level. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, so the other window. Yes, it's wrong. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? Now, for two middle aged city folk deciding to build an off grid homestead, we're definitely going to experience a lot of firsts. First time buying raw land, first time hiring contractors for dirt work and surveys, first time purchasing shipping containers, first time operating a tractor, and yes, first time installing screens on windows. So don't laugh too hard. So, after 19 years of marriage, we just realized that we've never owned a sectional couch. And that explains why we didn't know what the hooks on the bottom of the sections were for. Now we know. First time hooking up a sectional? Check. Because we were quickly running out of storage space, we had to dip in our pockets yet again and purchase another shipping container. Initially, I would have just purchased a 40-footer, but at that time, I didn't think I would eventually purchase a tractor and six attachments. And after acquiring more tools than necessities for the homestead, a single 20-footer is simply not cutting it. And after seeing what we had to do to get that park model up here, there is no way that a 40-footer on a tilt bed would have ever made it up here. So we have to get another container. Um, because our property is growing and we have to get another container for storage. So we got a new container. And, um, and also to keep organized <laughs> as we grow. My dog just kicked me or just jumped on me in the butt. Anyway, um, so 
we had to get another shipping container. So now we have two shipping containers. Two! For storage. Two. Um, and we also finally have our home. Ooh, ooh, yeah, baby. So we got a lot of work to do. We have to worry about solar. We have to worry about electricity, which is solar. We have to worry about septic tanks and water. How we're gonna use the toilet, what we're gonna do temporarily. Um, we might think about compost. We have to worry about just all kinds of stuff. Um, so we have a long journey, but this is just the beginning and I'm excited. I'm excited. So we are on the street and we're trying to put the home where you can't see it from the street, but <laughs> you can actually see it from the street. So it's all the way up the hill up there and we're way down here and you can actually see it. But it's all good because it's really, really cute. See how far we are? We're all the way down the driveway. And you can see, see it from the street, but it's very cute. It's all out in the open. It's all out in the open. <laughs> Seven Sigma Off Green.